All right. Uh, what is it? Was it Tiger Face? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, nerds? This is NGR Radio, episode 59. We're almost 60. Everybody excited? Everybody excited? No one's going to introduce me today except me. I'm Matthew Keel. There we go. Alongside me, as always, the commander in chief, the, the ruler of this castle, the leader of this pack. Not you, Moose. Corey Derrick, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm being oh! Matt today. Oh! I'm being oh! Matt today. How do I not have funk? <laughs> you have funk, it's just not beer. Oh, oh, Moose, how are you, sir? Oh. Makes me so sad. I'm good. I'm good. But, Corey, how you doing, man? <laughs> good. Good. It, dude, Matt bought me some beer and told me I had to drink it or he's going to fire me. So I said, Fire. <laughs> He was just gonna take over everything. He's just gonna take over. Everything. You know, know much, but you don't. But you don't have any power. I'm like, I know, but I, you have to let me believe this. Oh, my, my auto tune is it work? Is is it working right? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like your microphone was farting. That could. Yeah. I mean, that very well could be. It could have also been you. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. out there. I've had, I've had some sneakers. Um, so, uh, did, did you try it, Corey? What'd you think? I did. I actually drank the other one the other day oh okay and it was it's, it's pretty tasty i'm not gonna lie to you it's yeah. pretty pretty good i'm uh I'm excited like to it. drink the rest yeah I'm so like matt bought me a bunch of beer and i don't know what any of it is or how good or bad any it. of it is but i'm gonna try it i'm sure one of them probably tastes like complete butt and he's just gonna laugh when i tell him and he's just gonna make fun of me no actually i i didn't do that i got you a funky six pack that's all i did i got you two nice. citrus two silent disco i believe nice. uh, a mumble and a squishy the yeah. citrus is really good that's my citrus. personal favorite right now until yeah, i can try the silent disco I haven't had which is which yet. it's gonna happen soon moose i promise yeah, um I'm about this. anyways um, but uh, yes, yeah, Silent Disco is is kind of it's my favorite by them. But Citrus and Silent Disco, uh, they're kind of like their main their main two, um, because I've tried their other stuff. It does not hold up very well, as much as I really want it to. Because they have a they have a a, na- a good name for a stout called Storm and Norman, and they have yeah. a Rabid Wombat, which is a good name for a beer. And, and neither I just don't like them. Corey, what are you playing, man? <laughs> well. I didn't really play anything last week uh, because I was on vacation, and then Matt made me swing by and meet him in person because we've been doing a podcast for a year and a half now. And oh yeah, I held a gun to your head. I was gonna say he held you hostage. A, meta- a metaphorical gun to my head. I, I held a cheesesteak to your mouth with That's true. onions. And you oh left. my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> well, okay. First, my week was so full of really amazing and garbage food. And I was just so we went to New York City first, and mm-hmm. I had like twenty five pieces of pizza. Yeah, it was oh my gosh, it was amazing. Oh, so good. We found this place by our hotel called Little Italy Pizza, and it was it was the best pizza I've ever had in New York in my life. It that's was amazing. pizza. That's a pizza ass pizza shop name. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, it was so oh so good. Uh, but after that, and I went to the Nintendo store while we were there. Uh, we walked around and did some shopping and stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed in the Nintendo store. It was surprising. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the last time I went there, it was more of a store. And since I was there last, they remodeled Nintendo World mm-hmm. and made it more of a showcase and a museum than a store. <laughs> they had tons of switches there, though, but no blue Joy Cons. No. But I mean, as they say, you can't enjoy Nintendo without a little disappointment. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, a little, a little crying. <laughs> yeah, seriously, uh, dude. No, like T-shirts, no cool figurines or anything that were like. They're all stuff that you could walk in and uh, 
go to Toys R Us and get. Like they there was nothing special, you know. It was see that's stupid. Uh, that's a missed opportunity, especially yeah. like with the T-shirts. Like have like ha- what you need to do is commission an artist to do your T-shirts for you, and they're only available at that store. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and that'll make people come to that store, Even, especially with Metroid, with people being excited about what is it for? And then now they've got the the um, 3DS game is coming out. Yeah. Everyone's excited for Yeah, like there is so, no Metroid anything there. There is seriously who's excited for a 3DS game. I here not me. I'd love to see that I mean, game on the Switch, the but I was is, just saying it's on 3DS. The only thing is Nintendo came out and said 2D Metroid a future 2D Metroid uh this game is responsible for more 2D Metroids. They said if this game doesn't sell, we're not going to make them. It's like why are you, you making, it on why are you making, why are you making it on seven year old hardware? Why don't you put it on your brand new system? Yes, like exactly. That's, that's the thing. Exactly. And I can I guarantee you next year at some point if Metroid Prime gets pushed to 2019, which I guarantee you it will, that Samus Returns will pop up on Switch at some point next year. I, dude, I'm I'm just saying like I guarantee you it will, if it, especially yeah. if it doesn't sell. They'll port it. They'll port it. Uh, but uh. We went to Atlantic City afterwards with her family, and it was a good time. We went to the casino and won thirty bucks. Uh, nice, it's pretty exciting. Uh, we played. We we spent twenty and won thirty, so that that was exciting. Uh, and then we swung around and met Matt in Philadelphia, and we had the best ch- cheesesteak I've ever had in my life. Oh, whiz and onions. I need more. I'm coming back for more. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Moose so good. Moose spent like six months telling me I was out of my mind. <laughs> I was trolling Phillips. I was trolling Phillips, man. <laughs> He's like, why the fuck are you eating that garbage? I'm like, have you tried it? He's like, no. I go. Don't knock it. And then and then when we get there, he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. His wife goes, I think I want one. And then he's like, well, I guess I better. (laughs) Uh, Well, so like um, growing up in my part of Pennsylvania, which was Allentown, which is like 50 miles north of where Matt is in Philly. And we, like my family, I grew up, quote unquote, eating like pizza steaks, which is where you put marinara sauce on your cheesesteak and that's how we ate our cheesesteaks so is like not a, whiz- which is not a pizza at all no no no, no. like they call it, <laughs> like down here they call them pizza steaks cheesesteaks yeah. and i'm like y'all are fucking idiots but anyways it's um, true. uh so that's the way i grew up with it so it was so like as soon as he said whiz and onions i'm just like no no that's you don't eat with cheese whiz does not belong on a cheesesteak just no it doesn't so when we got there and Kelly, my wife, was like, I think I'm going to get one. I was like, you know what? I'll try it. Because I'll try anything once. Like, I'm not, like, there's very, there's, like, maybe, like, a list of, like, I can count on one hand of things that I will never try in my entire life. So I tried it, and it's good. It's delicious. I'd get it again. So, but anyways, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Corey. Those onion rings and that hot sauce. Oh, <coughs> oh my gosh. What is, oh, it was so good. It was this this week was a really good week in food. But when I got home, I found out that where I work was closed Sunday and Monday for Labor Day. So I had three days to play games, including today. And it was like, oh, oh my gosh, dude. I played, I platinumed Horizon. Which no, first no, platinum. Yeah, my first platinum. <laughs> my first platinum. Uh Popping a cherry right here on NGO. We're going to have a separate discussion on Horizon at some point, I think, somewhere either as a podcast on this feed or uh, maybe NGP or maybe just a separate video on the YouTube page uh, about the game and the way it handles a lot of things and, and the game in general. But the way they wrap that game up, like there are so many threads in that game and so many characters you meet and so many things that you do and the way it all comes together. I honestly was not expecting a good ending. Like, cause just yeah. video games just don't end well. Like that's just, that's been a thing in video games forever is like, if they're trying to tell a good story, it just doesn't end well. The last good ending I think of a video game was probably uh, maybe the last of us that I can remember. 
Uh, but dude, this ending just pulled together so well. And the way they tied it all together to make a game that is just so cohesive and so smartly done. And the fact that, you know, z- <laughs> I was surprised how much Zero Dawn was actually like, because, you know, when the game first came out, we were like, why is it called Zero Dawn? That's that's a dumb name. But like it, it actually has more meaning to the story than mm-hmm. Horizon. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. way that plays out, and just oh, so good. And now I can't, I can't wait for the Frozen Wilds, and I can't wait to see what kind of sequel they build. Because if they, yeah. if they fix like two or three minor issues that I have with the game, like I, I think Aloy is a little bit too tanky. I think she needs to be more agile. I think you can make her quicker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can agree with that. And Moose, before we were, before we started recording, we were talking about the resource uh, management mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, yeah maybe give get not take it away but tweak it a little bit to where refine like, it refine yeah it. yeah and you get the resources quicker that you need and, and stuff like dude i when that game ended i was like this uh, it's gonna be really hard when we have this game of the year discussion at the end of the year for me to choose between this and zelda because this is this is sony's best exclusive by far um uh, mm-hmm. and this is this is a game of a generation and that's coming off the same year that breath of the wild and assuming Mario Odyssey is going to be great. Like, you know, that it's, uh, I just, I'm very sad that this game came out, not just the same year as Zelda, but the same week as Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> and like yeah. this, this game has been overshadowed by breath of the wild. It feels like in conversation a lot. Uh, but man, this game, if you even if you don't own a PlayStation, you need to find a way to play this game. It is one of the few games I think you need to go out of your way to play. Mm-hmm. It is that good. Uh, I don't really think I mean, I really think the overshadowing comment really depends on your circle. Like that's true. I yeah, mean, that's I, true. That's I feel true. I feel like I feel like, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a Nintendo fan. I, I I'm not an apologist by any stretch, but I do like I do like what they do. Um and having conversations with Moose and Phillips or or whatever about how good Breath of the Wild is, I feel like Horizon actually helps Breath of the Wild in a lot of ways because and that's just because those two were so easily compared. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, what's it doing? Am I robot voicing or is it just cutting out? No, it's doing like a little like. Uh, yeah, like, it's doing like, like a like some feedback or something. Doing. Shit. You n- remember when Ed used to join us sometimes and like it'd be like kind of robot-y? Okay. Yeah. It's right, kind of moment on that line. If you leave and come back, it might fix it. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, yes, I'm, I'm gonna I'm get to totally, edit this episode. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm totally pumped for uh, Frozen Wilds. I think it's just gonna be awesome. Yeah. So, I want to know what's gonna happen with. Uh, well, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, but you meet a character during this game, and this character kind of helps you out, and I want to know how that story unfolds in the future. Yeah. Uh, man, dude, Horizon's really good. And uh, so far, you only said like a couple of words, so like, like yeah, words. It, it does it sporadically, so yeah, okay, yeah. so we'll see uh, what happens. Uh, okay. but uh, so I, I platinum Horizon and I started Hellblade, um, mm-hmm. another interesting game, uh, storytelling wise, atmosphere wise, pure graphical. W- powerhouse uh that game is astonishing to look at and listen to uh but don't go into it thinking that it's an action game because it's not it is a puzzle game it is a slight i don't want to say walking sim because it's it's not really a walking sim but it has that vibe Mm -hmm. where you're just exploring and re and listening to these lore stones that that give you a bit of history on you know the celtic lore Mm -hmm. uh and you, you're walking through this world and there's light combat that feels very Dark Soulsy in terms of, uh, you know, it's very deliberate. 
where you know once you swing your sword you're swinging your sword there's no getting out of that animation until it's over you need to time your dodge or the enemy will follow you with its swing and hit you uh yeah. you know you have your heavy and your light attack uh and you have to time it and some enemies are only susceptible to certain attacks as you progress through a combo and and it's very the combat is very simple dark souls is how is the only way i can really compare it but it's also very it's nowhere near as hard as dark souls like uh but you know it's it's cool it's got a lot of cool puzzles uh that you need to solve uh mm -hmm. and and just the the way uh senua is animated and her facial expressions is it's just it's a marvel to, to watch but uh so far i'd probably give it like a 7.5 or an 8 i'm only about halfway through the game uh, i'm gonna try after we record tonight to progress more through it i want to finish it before destiny 2 comes out uh so uh, that'd be smart yeah. like we were talking about that that's actually smart trying to get it done yeah because, mister uh, i'm not excited for destiny 2 wants to finish something so it's out of the way <laughs> well, i want to finish 2. hellblade so i can play destiny and mario rabbids at the same time because yeah. i still haven't uh -huh. I still have played mario rabbids yet which you know everybody says it's a nice yeah, here's good games. so A lot of people say it's good yeah and i also played the first chapter of uh lost legacy uncharted and uh it's more uncharted <laughs> I don't really need to say more than that. It's, uh, it's more Uncharted. It's it's beautiful. It's, uh, I mean, it's just an Uncharted game with new cast characters. It's not anything different, really. So, which I can see them uh, going down this path where they use the two of them, yeah, uh, or instead of Nathan, until they want to. Spoilers if you haven't beaten four, but until they want to get back to the Drake family. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I so. feel like the, if they do a proper Uncharted 5, they would use that character. Yeah, um, right. I agree. Like, so. if you're going to go with, like, the sequ like numbered sequels, yes, you're right. They would use that character. But, like, these spinoffs would be pretty cool. I'd love to see a game with Sully and uh, Sam. Like, I think that would be pretty cool, you know? So, yeah. Um, I could, Matt's I could, like, I don't give a crap. <clears throat> So, yeah. Matt, what have you been playing? I haven't been playing a goddamn thing. You guys should keep talking. I haven't played a single video game in like two weeks. It's bad. Wow. It's bad. Um, well, well, I, working crazy. I mean, I've been working crazy hours. I've been kind of working on a move as well. And yeah. See, yeah. Seeing, seeing Corey's big dumb face <sighs> was a great day. Right. So you I played video games that day, day you but know. he messed it up. <laughs> You know that picture is going to be the cover photo for this episode. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you think I care? Good. I don't know. <laughs> I was no, because like, because like, it was one of those things that, like, um, for all intents and purposes, Corey and I weren't sure it was going to happen at some point. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. there were several points leading up to your trip and during your trip, you're like, I don't know when this is going to work. Well, when you go then, on a when you're meeting people like you start your vacation one way and people start their vacation the other and then kind of yeah. there's not really any plan and people just kind of do things on a whim so like we just decided at the end of the vacation where we just you know I just like not nah, dogs I'm out yeah it's it was uh it was a little frustrating to be honest but not oh, not on not on Matt's side on my or side but like not on my side yeah, <laughs> I want the record. I want the record to show <laughs> that there was this one time where I wasn't the frustrating one. But it, it kind of worked out because we got the we had to take Sana's cousin home anyway, and she lives in Philly, so it was kind of that worked out, man. That was convenient. Yeah. That was yeah. really convenient. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it was it was a good time, but nice. Yeah, it was. Really, the only problem was the Uber ride it took me, because it took me forever to get to you guys. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, and I was standing there like I I swear Matt was walking down the sidewalk, and like I looked at him like three times, and I was like looking for a car, and I wasn't because like he said he was Ubering <laughs> there, and I was looking for a car, and I looked at Matt three separate times walking down the sidewalk, and I just 
<laughs> took me like oh it was bad <laughs> i'm like i oh, will see it in like and like reed was with me and and i'm, I'm sitting here I'm like he doesn't know it's me <laughs> he doesn't know it's me at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind yeah. of awesome and then all of a sudden you're like he's like oh there he is <laughs> i'm like here i am there's yeah, that beautiful bastard. Rock you like a hurricane. Well, see, the funny thing is, I'm pretty sure I got the same look from Moose, and he met me in the parking lot of my apartment complex. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I did. I was like, and, and my wife wouldn't get out of the car. <laughs> she, was, she was like, I oh, don't know, this is sketchy. And so, <laughs> like, what he did is the apartment, we hung out, whatever, I saw his place, and then we came back out. And I think we were going up to Bethlehem that day. Like I came down, or, no, or we, we were we going to Philly. We're, we're going, going to Philly because we because we, you guys drove. I had you guys yeah. park in the city, and then we yeah. walked. Yeah, that's right. And then and then like the next day. So we the next day, which was like a Wednesday, we were we were gonna try and go do stuff in Philly. And my wife's like, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, Do you want to just go pick up Matt and we'll go to like Bethlehem and like this and that and like like I listed off like six things. And she's like, Yeah, sure. So like I text him and. We, she was out of the car. She's, you know, like we went to drop him off at home and we were hanging out, listening to vinyls. The two of them are just standing there like chatting about vinyl. And I'm just like, fucking nervous. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyways, so it was, it was a good time. It was the, but yeah, I probably gave you that look too. I was just like, is it <laughs> I, cause like, he's tall. <laughs> like, back. Oh, so you don't expect that. Corey's taller than I am, so. <laughs> Oh really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah, my I think my wife was surprised at how tall you were. That's fair. <laughs> because like all my friends are I mean, they're not short, but they're not as tall as I am. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. They don't even come close. Well it's funny, like it well, it's funny, like when I was doing the whole online dating thing, like I you know, I actually put in my program, I'm six three. This is true. <laughs> and then when I show up, people go, Man, you do not look that tall in your pictures. I'm like, I don't I don't know how I'm supposed to take that. So, you know. Well, like the only reason why I knew like I knew that you were super tall is because I saw the videos from Extra Life last year and you were like towering over Lee and Ray and, and <laughs> was there last year. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not exactly the tallest of people. I no. know. <laughs> I know. I well, I know, but like I was just like, well, Matt's Matt's tall. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Corm on the beer show. He's like, "You're 63?" I'm like yeah, why is this a problem for you? He's like, you look so proportionate. And Jesse's like six five, but he's lankier yeah. than I am. Yeah, he's he's a lanky mofo. You're at least <laughs> like when you walk up, you you look like an uh, like a normal human being. <laughs> so looks, you're not. Like, I'm a me super. I'm a meaty specimen. We'll say so that. Like, I got a I got a buddy of mine who was my roommate uh, after my ex wife moved out, and he was like a buck seventy. And mm -hmm. he was six. He's like he was like six three. Jeez. Like he was just nothing but bones. Like he was like skeletons with like some skin thrown on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like when I like I've got two opposite ends of the spectrums. Another buddy of mine who's six three. He's he's pretty large. But then you know. So then there's my other buddy. So I'm like I don't know what to expect. You know what I mean? And then I was like, oh, Matt's actually like proportional <laughs> like a real human being at six three, you know? So oh, anyway. hang on. human <laughs> Well you know. Well yeah. um in terms of the only game I've really had a chance to play, it's it's a board game. I've been playing more Guild Ball. I talked about it on last week's show and I went which to awesome. which I went to uh basically right after Corey left. Um, I went back to Showcase in Swarthmore and played another game. I got the shit kicked out of me. I got completely shut out, and and it was one of those things that fuck. It's happening again. Uh, it was one of those things that you know. I at least I learned. It, it was like I was stuck against a, a boss in Bloodborne or Dark Souls, and I'm like, okay, I know what I'm doing wrong. I know, I know, and I kind of know how to fix it, but. Uh, Moose, what have you been playing? Um, so our August challenge is over with NGP, so I completely and early deleted Shadows of Mordor. Um, if you listen to the last episode, uh, this month is the Naughty Dog slash Uncharted month. 
So uh, I started a little bit of Lost Legacy. I think I'm in chapter three, maybe four. Um, I'm enjoying it tremendously. I like Lost Legacy. So this month, Jason has to play all of Uncharted because he's never played it, even Golden Abyss. Um, he has played Last of Us, and I'm the opposite. I've never played Last of Us, but I've played all the Uncharted games, except for Golden Abyss. I just bought it like on a holiday sale. So I'm going to be playing Golden Abyss. I'll be playing Lost Legacy. I'll probably play the Jack and Daxter precursor you know, PS2 on PS4 game that they gave us for free if you pre-ordered Last Legacy. And then <sighs> I've been playing a shit ton of Grand Theft Auto. I've fallen back down that rabbit hole because Jason, me, and Justin have been, Justin Doss, have been talking about playing Grand Theft Auto online because we want to do the heists. And so Jason and I were playing last night and the night before, and we're like, we... The problem with Grand Theft Auto is it's very cumbersome when you're, like, playing the online modes. Like, it's not very intuitive on how you, like, do missions or what you should do. So we were just sticking up people, like, just robbing, like, stores, like a grocery store. And then we get a two-star, and then one or two of us would drive. And then it's, like, 10, 15 minutes of driving trying to lose, you know, your wanted level. And then we go rob another place. And so... Uh, me, me, uh, Jason, Jeff, who's been on the show before, and Justin are gonna try. We're gonna like do like a crew, and we're gonna try and do like the heists and try and like play Grand Theft Auto online. I personally, I'll never platinum the game. I think Jason wants to platinum the game, but I'm never platinum that game because I don't have the patience for it. Aren't those um, games like so I know just, like the PS2 classics are super hard to platinum, especially like Vice City and. Uh, well, um, I have, I'm stuck in Grand Theft Auto 3 because here, I might just re-completely start my game because the problem, like I, I've said it on the show, I believe, but the problem with Grand Theft Auto 3 is you really need to do a lot of the trophies before you get to the end of the game because by the end of the game, you piss off so many gangs that you can't do the missions you need to do because they're shooting at you and they blow up your car. And you're just, you can't even... You can't even like drive down the street without your car blowing up because they're shooting and killing you. And it's just like, I wish like the trophy guy would have stated that because then I would have done that. Because I think there's one where you have to get to level 12 on paramedic and I can't do that. So I might have to start all over again to get 100% completion. So I'm going, so, but Grand Theft Auto 5 is just insane. Like there, there's like a trophy for getting eaten by a shark swimming in the ocean. So I'm probably just going to do that. And have some fun with that and just try and try and do some of the you know like the trophies that i can do but i'm not going to be like trophy hunting for that game so i've been playing grand theft auto um i think i'm uh, god uh, sundered i've been playing a bunch of sundered which is a lot of fun and then i'm just kind of hanging out and waiting for a Songbringer to come out tomorrow so i can buy that with my PSN card I won from our completion percentage challenge. So, but other than that, that's pretty much what I've been playing. I was supposed to be given a PSN card too. I don't know where you, need, you need to crack the whip on that shit, buddy. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Who was supposed to give me that? I forgot. Was that was that the Antonio? Was that the one for the for the Last Guardian? Uh, no, Antonio paid me. Okay. What Brian Nimron have not, but I'm oh. I'm not really pursuing that. <laughs> I never was. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not going to see. I still like, I still need to get, <clears throat> send you the twenty dollar code that I owe you. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, oh, for I, winning? Did you win last year's uh, the, the twenty questions? 20 questions. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He annihilated me, jerk. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm, not I'm unlike only, this year. It's only it's only a matter of time till I win another one, so it's cool. Mm, not if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to win this uh, this one again, so... You don't know about that. You could go on a tear, Corey. You could. You could. You could. I could. <sighs> I could go on a tear. So, Oh, and, and more Bloodborne. I'm playing my agility character. So, which, Corey, we, that needs to be one of your next plats. Yeah. I know. I know. I, yeah. uh, I'm... 
Yeah, I need to get back to Bloodborne. I, I, here's the thing. I, when I try to play that game by myself, I'm just like, I really wish somebody was here to help me. And <laughs> where are, you just got to text us, man. You just got to message me and say, and then like, not even just me, I'll just be like, Hey, Jeff, Jason, do you want to help Corey play some Bloodborne? And they'll probably be like, yeah, sure. Let's play some Bloodborne. You yeah. Know? So, I, I know. I, <laughs> I've been I've been too into Horizon the last couple weeks to like even yeah. try to even try to play anything different. Look, you piece of shit! Whoa! The last Whoa. time you said you were gonna play Bloodborne with us, guess who didn't show up? Moose was there. I was there. Um, there was a crucial third party. <laughs> Someone who said they were going to show up? Yeah, someone who actually said, hey, we should play Bloodborne after this show. Huh. Oh, yeah, it was you, I know. Corey. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, looking, Anyways. At my, looking at my schedule, sir, and I'm going to do this live, and I don't care if my mic is messing up, um, I only work till 5 tomorrow through Friday. Yeah. Okay, we could do it tomorrow. There's plenty of nights. I'll be on tomorrow. And I don't have to record, so I'm good. I, I work I Saturday at 4, so we could do it in the morning. Well, Saturday I work in the morning. And Sunday I work 8 to 4, so we could do it then. Well, I can, I, I, can, I, can, I can help him on Saturday, depending on what I'm doing, or Sunday. Right, so and, you know, and like, you know, it's just... You have resources. Yes. <laughs> Call on the Send Hammer us, Bros. Call say, yes. on the Hammer Bros. All you have to do is play an ABBA song and we show up. That's true. It's true. true. Preferably true. take a chance on me. Yes. Because yes. Dancing Queen my, is overrated. No, my fuck wife. Dancing Queen. Yes. My wife loves my my wife loves Mamma Mia. Like Mamma like Mia's all right. Wait, 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 wait a second. Are you talking the song or the the musical? The song. I'm the no, no, we're, I'm we're all talking. We're talking about the song. He's, no, 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 he's talking about both. Well, that, that, that's, that. because, that's because that's because Son is a child. She doesn't know any better. Oh, um, <laughs> hey, oh. and she married oh. him. What do you want from me? Um, but you know, you could you could use SOS. You could use Mama Mia. You could use Lay All Your Love on Me. You could use uh, what is it? Does I, your mother know that you're out? Yeah, give me, give me, give me a man after midnight. I mean, you could do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm partial to knowing me, knowing you, and like Super Trooper and Vue Vu and Winner Takes It All. Ooh, I love Super Trooper. Super Trooper. Waterloo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Water. Waterloo's my victory song. Whoa. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's he really went. I know. Robot, really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's his mic wanted to show us how excited he was about Super Trooper. Yeah. Mike I love Super Trooper. Super Trooper's so good. Uh, <laughs> thanks for making this to... a fun show to edit. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Yes. I don't know how to fix it, man. I mean, I could just use. You want me to just use my iPhone mics? I could do that. No sleeping on the job, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh man. So anyways. Yeah, Bloodborne. I need to get back to that. Yeah. I'm close. I'm close to beating it. There's just see. There's so just, like there's probably a bunch of stuff that you need to do on your first playthrough before you even go into your second playthrough. So that's probably what we need to look at before we send you down that path. Yeah, I'm looking I'm trying to look at my trophies right now. Um, and you also have to do the chalice dungeons, which I have no problem helping you with. Fuck Amidala, but um, we'll get mm, you there. We'll get you there. Yeah, all of my trophies are hidden. Uh oh. I mean, like, okay. right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I only have whoa. Oh, well, there goes my. That's I fun. have 12 trophies, it looks like, to get. Uh, so. Do you remember the last bot you meet, b bot, boss you beat? I don't remember. Uh, Matt said I was two bosses away from the end. So. Oh, wow, yes. Then you don't have much. You yeah. don't have much left on your first playthrough. So that's Yeah. Uh, I forget where Matt left me. My, my, at Waterloo, Napoleon did surrender. Wow, he sounds normal now. Yeah. There you go, buddy. <laughs> 
for now. <laughs> Sounds normal for now. Uh, oh, for yeah, you, man. We need to. Do, you need to do Canehurst because you got the invitation there. Okay. Um, you need to do. I need to take you to get to the Upper Cathedral Ward, which you can do now. Also, so he's a lot of bosses away from the end. He's all the these are like, optional. Yeah, these are he optional. can. I'm pretty yeah. sure he could just head to the end yeah. at this point. Yeah. Like, did he? Did he beat Mensis? I don't think so. Um, but I'm so pretty sure. Got, like, once you get, once you, once uh, you. Beat, so he's got, he's got Mensis, and then the wet nurse, and then he yeah. can go to the end. So that's yeah. where the two bosses are. Okay. That's and then, but then he just needs to do Kanehurst, um, the Upper Cathedral, Upper Cathedral Ward, which is two bosses up there. He needs to find the workshop. Oh, that's not that hard. I can yeah, like that. it's it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff that like we can't do with him. We just have to walk in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, like like I do with like most people I help. I'm just like I can't do this with you, but I will play the game like while you're playing the game and like walk you through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So but, uh, yeah, that's yeah. what you that's what you can do. Yeah. Anyways, so moving along. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, topics, gentlemen. Anybody have a topic? <sighs> I'll be honest. Microtransactions. Microtransactions, man. Micro <laughs> Microtransactions are dumb. <laughs> so, but, you yeah. know, I, so here's the thing. Like, I know a lot of people were excited about Shadow of War. And were they? I, are I they? Tr well, some people are. I tried Shadows of Mordor twice, and then the for that was the, like four times now. Moose. No, for the month of August, it's the third time. It's the third time for the month of August, and I'm just like, I can't, I can't fucking play this game. I, I just can't. I, I will admit it. Bloodborne has ruined me. As far as like controls go, just it's difficult. It's difficult to go back. It really is. The controls are just so good. It's hard to go back to a game that has fucking shitty ass controls. Like you're playing the game, and you go up to like a ladder, and you can't climb the ladder until you rotate the camera around for X to appear on the bottom of the screen for you to hit X to climb the ladder. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, why is that even, like, why do you have to make this so difficult? Like, as soon as I climb up, as soon as I move up to something that is climbable, I should be able to hit X and climb it. So I know, like, recently, well, maybe not recently, it's been like a month or so, but they announced that they're going to put microtransactions in Shadow of War. And I'm like, that's it. I will never buy that game. I don't care if that game is a dollar. I will never buy that game because microtransactions in a single player game is just being fucking greedy bastards. Greed fucking bastards. Because not only is it being greedy, but you what you also do to your player base is you are like, okay, well, we're going to put these microtransactions in. But they're not going to put them in just to be there if you want to buy them. They're going to put them in and say, okay... Well, the regular, the normal player that doesn't necessarily want to buy the microtransactions has to grind like hell to get anything, you know, that they want in the game, you know, or so we're going to make them either grind like hell or we're going to just make them be like, okay, well, you can just pay $20 and have this stuff faster. It's, it's freaking ridiculous. It's not needed. And it's freaking WB Games being a bunch of fucking greedy bastards. So, I I think from here on out, any game that has microtransactions that affects a game in the way that it does with Shadow of War, I am just, I'm banning. Like, I will not purchase. I'm not going to play. Like, I'm, I'm taking a stance because, like they say, like, vote with your wallet. Don't buy the game. Well, you know what? I'm not going to buy your game. I'm going to buy your piece of shit game. Um, uh, my cousin, my other cousin, not Christian, the Dark Souls Lord, but my other cousin, Andy. Uh, I'd love to see Christian and Ahmed fight PvP. I really do. Dude, I'd love to see that. Any, dude, any day of the week. I forgot, I forgot to tell Christian in the last patch for Neo, they added PvP. 
So he went back to Bloodborne PvP, and he's been doing Dark Souls PvP. I don't think he knows that Neo has PvP, so he has Neo, and I'm like, you need to go PvP and Neo. But anyways, I'd love to see the two of them fight. But anyways, um, my cousin Andy, he loves the the world of Lord of the Rings, but he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm not buying this game now either. You know, he was like, I just put up with the way the game played just because I wanted the story and I wanted to be in the world of Lord of the Rings. And he's like, now? He's like, I ain't buying this shit. You know? So, what do you guys, what is your stance on um, microtransactions? Fuck them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, now, well, I, you know what? I shouldn't be that, I shouldn't be that pejorative. But, like, there are certain times where microtransactions are good. Um, I feel like Hearthstone is a good one. And okay. that's, really, that's really the only, because you're buying packs. And th- those packs are randomized. And they don't, they while they can help you, they can help your chances of winning. Yes, you still have to build the deck. And you still have to play the deck. And you still have to earn it. Um, yeah. I mean, Blizzard games in general are probably the standard for microtransactions because, like, you know, you could buy loot chests in Overwatch, and all that is is skins. I'm, to my knowledge, and I might be wrong, that does not help help in any way in the game. Uh, People will just be pissed because you look cooler. So. Um, ah, f- I I can't. I don't know what to do now. Sorry, oh, Corey. No, I I apologize. I don't know what to do. Um, we'll just fight but, later. it will be fine. Yeah, Sweet. you 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 said that in Philly when I bought you food, and you still haven't. Yeah, this me. dude buys my food and yeah, gives me a beer, gives me tokens for the subway. Yep. Yeah. See, see, that's a class act. What a, what a Matthew, jerk. You know, I have to live the rest of my life feeling bad. Yeah, he's a class act. It's true. I'm, but I'm, I'm still the worst, though. Um, but let's see. I can't think of any other microtransactions where they're good. There's not a lot of them that are. <laughs> well, I actually, I actually realized something a while back because I've been flirting with the idea of finally starting Rainbow Moon. Ooh. There, are, there are microtransactions in that, that. Yeah, I you can buy you can buy Rainbow Coins. I don't know how that helps you in the game. Which I have. Fact, there's a trophy thought, where if you have like enough of them. I bought the Rainbow Coins, so I bought like a bunch of the packs. I put on the Vita because I had the game on the Vita, and then I don't know if you remember my. 64 bit or a gigabyte memory card crapped out on me, so I lost that save. Yeah. So, um, I have to start that game over again because Rainbow Skies should be hitting either this year or early next year, so, which is the sequel for the listeners at home. But, um, yeah, I, I, it's that, not they've, a, kind of, they've kind of gone dark, it's which is good, yeah, just be in development and be working on your game. I don't. In my personal opinion, it doesn't ruin the game because uh, you can just – well, I guess you do kind of grind it out. But I don't I don't see it being punishing, you know what I'm saying, to, like, to, to grind out the rainbow coins. So I don't know. Um, but it, it is ridiculous. Microtransactions are ridiculous. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like – I've spent a couple dollars in Overwatch, like on loot boxes, but like, I don't know. I I just doing what Shadow War is doing is just kind of kind of shady. At that point, you might as well just sell freaking a season pass that gives you all this stuff, or like, you know, one of the other ways you make money that nobody likes. You know, like this this is like the worst possible thing. Like, hey, don't want to spend time in our game. Here you can pay for not playing our game, which is like, yeah. I don't know. It's just it's weird. And like, eh, I don't know. It just kind of rubs me the wrong way. Uh, yeah. Like multiplayer games is is 
different. And like a lot of things are cosmetic stuff. Like, you know, yeah. Halo, that's how Halo produces new maps, right? That's how, you know, Dota makes their money. That's how Overwatch, you know, gives you free content and heroes is by, hey, we're going to give you this content for free uh, based on our numbers because you're going to buy skins for those characters or, you know, cosmetic yeah. Cosmetics for like, I mean, Titanfall Two does the same thing, right? Where you can buy uh, cosmetic yeah. things for your for your Titan. So, yeah, uh, which I installed on my PS4, by the way, Moose. We gotta play that. We need to play. Too. We need to I play. Know. You, me, Jason, and Jeff need to play that. Yeah, so. we need. We need to do. Well, that. Matt can play with us too if he still has it downloaded. I don't. Know. Yeah, I do. I just need to get my head out of my ass. Like that's my problem. My like, Guild Ball has been a has been a. Hey, man, listen. You really do you. You, <laughs> you do you. I'm just saying, if you still have it downloaded, let's play. Speaking of microtransactions, there are plenty of microtransactions in the board game. It's actually really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, uh, we were talking about it. Uh, so I have the Bloodborne uh, card game, and I think you were talking about the, the Dark Souls card game that's going to be coming out. But they yeah. just announced that the they're doing the Old Hunters expansion pack for Bloodborne. Uh, which is coming out next year, and I'm like, well, great, I got to get on that. And you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I've got to got to complete the collection because I'm a yeah. fucking nerd. Well, I but. mean, it's one of the, it's one of those things. Like, I started, I wouldn't have even found Guild Ball had I not kickstarted Dark Souls. Right, and right, because they it's the same company and it? same it's the same maker. Now yeah. these these people yeah. did not make. The Bloodborne card game. I do not know who did that, but the same people who did Dark Souls are doing the Dark Souls card game, and I'm assuming it's probably mirroring the Bloodborne one. But um, but like for for Guild Ball specifically, um, like there's a new set called Kickoff where it gives you two teams, the Brewers and the Masons, and that's enough for two people to completely have everything they need to play a game. It's a beautiful thing. It was it was it was the thing that said that said I'm going to pull the trigger so I can at least maybe find somebody else to play with. Mm-hmm. Um, that way I don't have to say oh you need this 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 and this and then we yeah. can then we can talk. Um, and then you know I met I started digging online locally and found out there's a yeah. nice community of people that that play in about an hour away in Swarthmore. And they're all wonderful individuals, and, and they were pretty welcoming to somebody who did, who literally had no clue what they were doing other than watching videos on YouTube, and right. watching them play, and then you know watching myriad of videos of just how to how different teams work and the the different combo systems. Like it's a freaking deep game, and I. It's one of those things that, like, I'm actually going to probably, well, I know I'm going to um, get metal miniatures and paint for the first time. Right. Like, I've never done that before. I don't know how any of that works. Um, I'm probably going to, at some point, buy all the teams and paint all of them because this is a fascinating goddamn thing and hopefully when i see either of your beautiful faces again i can sit you down and probably coach you through a game because maybe by then i'll know what i'm doing but i don't know i want it to be next year i'll be honest <sighs> i i want to come back to pennsylvania next year yeah so. I'm, I'm looking at that at those uh tickets by the way mm-hmm. matt for november yeah i'm gonna treat myself to some birthday pretty doable yeah, I think so. You got a November birthday too, don't you? Yeah, it's a week after. It's literally a week after yours. When's oh, yours? Okay. Seventeenth. When's yours? The nineteenth. Nineteenth. Mine's the twenty fourth. So. I think yours is like, I think days. yours is it's not a week. I think, I think yours is the same day as Chris Har's. Really? Oh shit. <laughs> Moose. Oh shit. Uh, so the Bloodborne card game was published by Cool Mini or not? And they are, I mean, from what I know about the tabletop world, they are highly, highly reputable. Okay, fact, well, that's in cool. Fact, in fact, a lot of miniatures, like, painting competitions, which that's a weird goddamn thing in itself, um, are I put need to on a cool mini or not. To play that game, that's my problem. 
I have the game, but I need three people to play the game. Like, I can't just play with another person, so... Yeah. Um, well, I mean, at least the cool thing with, like, the Dark Souls board game is I can set it up and, and play myself. It's difficult yeah. as all hell, though. Like, the dice rolls are brutal in that game. Reva wouldn't play with you? Uh, she, I, I think she would, but she's, like, she's face deep in, in grad school. She doesn't need to learn anything else. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. The first time I went and played Guild Ball, she came and like we started setting up, and she was hearing me talk with the other other people there, and she's like, um, "I feel like he'll learn more if he plays you." And 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 that guy beat the pants off me, but at least like he sat there and said, "Okay, think about what you're doing. Think about like look at actually look at your cards and look at all the abilities and think about how you can combine them together and it's really a lot to sort of grasp at once but yeah um, everybody least, I've, everybody I've played against has said look here are my thoughts on how you're doing and you you don't you, you're not going backwards so right which is good yeah it's good that that that, that community is built that way it's always good. yeah I mean, I feel, I feel like, you know, I play a couple more games. I'm ready to go to a tournament. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> See what happens. Well, you got that PAX thing coming up, don't you? Yeah, I'm going to hopefully get a I'm going to hopefully get um, a team of miniatures painted so I can actually take a team there and see what happens. Um, but so much to learn. It's crazy. Anyway. You need, if you need miniatures painted, let me know. I know some people in the Pennsylvania area that paint miniatures oh really i'm telling you yeah just, just let me know you know um, you know you know my name you know my number <laughs> i'm letting you know <laughs> All right. hopefully like hopefully they'd be down to teach a noob how to do it because that's more what i'm curious about um I think they're out of York, oh, the Allentownish area. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, so it's not that I, far I, from you. Um, but tell them, tell them, meet me at Funk. It'll be great. I'm sure it would be fun. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> um, back to microtransactions. Um, Ninety-nine percent of people do them badly. Uh, very few do them well. Or very well, very few do them positively, and only a couple do them absolutely well. Um, I think Blizzard does them well, and um, and Shadow of War having microtransactions is real dumb. But we could level criticism at Near Automata from this year because they, have they, they, they well, there's a way to buy trophies in that game. Yeah, but that's not really microtransactions. That's just like grinding out like the in-game currency so that you can actually like you're not paying real money for that. Okay. So but like I know like that that's I, that's where I think my thing with microtransactions comes from. Like, like I know you're actually paying you're you're so you make me pay sixty dollars for Shadows of War and then you're gonna either A make me grind out like two, three hundred hours to get what I want, or you're just gonna be like, oh well for an extra twenty, thirty dollars you could just have that stuff and it's like okay well then your game is not a 60 dollar game your game is a is a fucking 90 to 100 dollar game mm -hmm. you know what i mean and yeah. so but like um i just i feel like near automato is different because it's not real money like you can't you can't spend 30 dollars and get Fifteen thousand in-game credits, and then go buy a couple trophies and spend some more money. Like you have to earn the in-game. As far as I know, you okay. have to earn the in-game currency to be able to pay for it. So it's like a grind. There's a grind there. Okay. You know? Which, and I think uh, when Platinum Achievements was still going, we had Rough Dog on, and he basically said, "Well, you can only do this in your third playthrough." Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it realistic that you could actually have the platinum done by then? Yeah. Or you could actually be on course. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have the answer then. I don't have it now. But, like, I think there's – at least there's a question you can ask yourself as to whether or not you want that. Rather yeah, than, like, think, oh, this will make me better, like For Honor did? No, fuck that. Like, I, I loved Nier Automato, what I've played of it. But 
I got to a point with the game where I was like, I want to platinum this game. But my problem is I haven't been trophy hunting long enough to like know when I don't need a guide and when I do need a guide. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, with Nier Automata, I'm like, I will wait for the PlayStationTrophies.org guide to come out and then I will go back to that game. You know what I mean? Because if I go yeah. back to that game, I want to platinum it and I want to like, you know, knock it off the list. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at with that game. I thoroughly enjoy what I've played. It's a great game. It's in my top five for the year. So. Yeah. Like I, that, I, you know, when Fallen Legion was actually one of those games that I decided, Oh, I'm going to test my, my, my trophy hunting sort of metal. Right. This, right. With this right. game. Yeah. And I played through that game like 12 times. Damn. And, um, and I, I, it got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm, I did this this time. I started taking notes like my third playthrough. I'm like, okay, I did this, 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 this for each decision. And there are a shit ton of decisions in that game. Uh -huh. And trying to parse out each one. And most of them do not have any result. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't change anything. So you don't really know. Oh, it was bad. It was real bad. And I'm Sweet. like, you know what? I'm going to wait for a guide and just yeah. be done yeah. with it. Yeah, and then plan them in and be done with it. Yeah, because holy shit, that was a that was way way more hours than I wanted to spend with a game, let let alone a good one. Well, I mean, and then the other thing is like it's it's different on PS4. And I know you bought the same bundle mm -hmm. that I bought. Yeah. Which yeah, was like it was like twenty dollars. You could pre-order it, and you got the Vita version and the PS4 version. So when that guy comes out, you'll have the guide for the Vita version, which I know you've been playing. But then you also have it for the PS4, so you can just tear through the PS4 version, you know, and get the yeah. get the two platinums. Hopefully, so, yeah. Did hopefully to to this point, there's not a guide yet. So yeah, it might be a while. Like usually, get, like that came out what June, July. Yeah. Yeah, it was like your guys' third episode. It was crazy. Yeah, it was like our third episode. We already had an interview with the developer, and um, yeah, it was coming. It came out like right when I came to see you, or when I was yeah. in Pennsylvania. So that was mm -hmm. like June or something, and so um, it hasn't been out long. So usually, on an average games take at least like six months to get a trophy guide yeah you know? so unless they're quick platinums yeah like i know um gideon has platinum cosmic star heroin and i want to platinum that game as well and i know he did it through just like you know because he's got a pixel like i do so like pixels operate like you just say hey google and you look up a trip you can just say a word and it searches it for you yeah so i know he had to do a lot of hey google and then he had to find like the trophies and figure out how people got the trophies to like mm -hmm. platinum that game. I think it took him like a week. So mm, not bad. No, no, it's not it's not a bad platinum. I mean, I'm still waiting for it to come on Vita. But anyways, you know, it's a whole nother problem. Corey, what do you think of microtransactions? It I I mean, it just depends on what the game is, right? It depends on what they're for i think you know microtransactions in a single player game suck i so think you, so, so you're okay with like titanfall yeah i'm okay in. i'm okay with like, like it's all cosmetic and then but and you're not okay with like shadows of war coming in and being like right i'm okay with like the way oh, overwatch does it is every time you level up you get a loot box every time there's an event you get two free event loot boxes and then every time you level up you get either the event loot box or regular loot box, depending on which one you choose. You can open either mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't want to wait to level up, which is like every five or six matches, depending on how good you are, you know, you can go and buy loot boxes. You can buy one loot box it, or you can buy 50 loot boxes at a time. It just, it doesn't matter. Like, but you, it's all stuff that you can unlock in game. As long as you're playing, you know, it's all, it, there, there's nothing locked behind the loot boxes, you know, and I, I'm pretty sure Titanfall is the same way where like everything's cosmetic that you can buy 
And yeah. even even if it's not in the game, it's just cosmetic and it doesn't affect the way you play at all. Right. Uh, right. So, uh, and and that's how Halo Five was too. They like you got the card packs and you unlock different skins and stuff for your weapons and and your armor and stuff. But all of it was just cosmetic, uh, and you got it all for free when you leveled up anyway. So, uh, you know, but. I mean, I mean, like I said earlier, Shadow of, the way Shadow of War is doing it is just kind of like it's real shady. And like then, if you have to like, I don't know if I. It's a thing too. Like if you have to wait to see when the game comes out to see how it plays, and if it feels like you're not progressing, and it's because it's locked behind the loot box, then that's really shady, and that's really yeah. bad. It's a really bad look for them. You know, uh, Warner Brothers has a knack for this, right? They did it with Injustice. They did it with, uh, you know, because Injustice has a loop has a loot system now. Like, nah, it wasn't as bad, but it is stat altering loot stuff. Yeah. Like, you put your armor on, and it alters your stats when you go it makes online. You better. Yeah, yeah, it. it, yeah. it, it so, uh, so, you, you know, I pay to win. Yeah, really? and that's 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 bad. That's a bad look. And you know the way Warner Brothers handled it for Injustice was well, uh, you can go to a private match to uh, use the stats of the armor, but when you fought someone online, it was purely cosmetic stuff. Which you know that's how they handled it for online matches. But you could still use the stuff you paid for. And like the way it sounds is there's like a tower defense kind of mode in Shadow of War where like. The army you build, you can send people to guard your quote online castle or whatever, and yeah. people can come attack it. And if you don't buy into the loot boxes, you're not going to get the better stuff to protect your castle. And it's just that's pretty pretty shady. So see people now, like, trying to figure out the Metal Gear Solid Five insurance policies or whatever those things were. Yeah, yeah. So like like the opposite side of this, which kind of makes me want microtransactions is Battlefield 1. So I've played Battlefield 1 multiple times, and I've played Battlefield 3, i played Battlefield 4, I love both of them tremendously. I played a shit ton of Battlefield 3. And then Battlefield 4, I bought it on 360, and then when I upgraded PS4, I bought it when it had it on a steep sale, because I was like, this is a game that I'm going to want to play. And they fixed the issues on PlayStation 4 and, and Xbox One, but the problem with Battlefield 1 is people that have been playing longer than you are always going to be better than you. Like, I, I've talked to Captain Cannon about this and, and Dominic uh, Jebedea, and we've come to like the conclusion that, like, people are killing us with guns because, like, they've leveled up to a certain point to get those guns, but it automatically makes us like not as good of a player that it takes away the skill base if you know what i'm talking about so like it's not a skill based game anymore it's just how long have you been playing you know what i'm saying and then so in that type of this instance i'd love to like if they had a five ten dollar pack where i could be like okay brian your your um support class can be automatically upgraded which i think they do have actually to be honest i haven't really looked but I can upgrade it completely and ultimately and get the same gun that these guys keep killing me with, then, you know, that would be worth the investment. That's the, I feel the flip side of the other coin. You know what I mean? Where like you feel like you've spent $60 on a game and it's not skill based anymore. It's really people are paying to win. And it's like, well, now I'm stuck just grinding it out because I spent Sixty dollars on the freaking game that I spent. I think I bought the season pass when it was half off. So really, like eighty to ninety dollars for the entire game in the season pass. And it's like these guys are always going to win. They're always going to win because they've been playing longer than I have. Because I had no one to play with, and the game is tough. Like in my personal opinion, I could always swing the pendulum in Battlefield Three and Four. So, like, I could come in and I could jump in and my kill-death ratio is shit. 
But like the third, like the second, third, or fourth match, I could always get my my kills better than my deaths. I could always get more points, and so I go from like ninth or tenth place up to like third or fourth place. But like in Battlefield One, I just can't swing the pendulum the other way. And and Captain Canada has said the same thing. Like it's just like the game is freaking brutal. And so I don't I don't it, it's it's gotta be some kind of specific case with the game that it's just it's just like that. But it's just like you know, we're always screaming out. We're always like at any time we play, it's like that motherfucker killed me with that that hell grosser gun or whatever it is, and it's just like he killed me with that gun and then like he dies and then I'll come around and kill the guy. I'm like, Well, I at least killed the guy for you and then that guy comes and kills me later and it's just like it's just like it just gets ridiculous, and then like your kill death ratio, like for a match, I'm like it's it's not even it's ridiculous. It's not even 1.0. It's like it's so bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like maybe like 10 and like 40 because like a match Jeez. lasts like a half hour or something like that. So, which is fucking forever. It is forever, but. I mean, it is like we play conquest, so. But anyway, so I I can see like the flip side of microtransactions, but single players they definitely don't belong in. So like any single player game that comes out and it's like we have microtransactions, I will not be buying from here on out, unless there's always an exception to the rule. But mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, I will not be buying that game. <laughs> Yeah, you'll always find one you're like, oh, I'm kind of okay with this. I'm kind of okay with this because I have no problem grinding in the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's a developer that I love. You know, like, so, like, say, say, uh, you've been talking about Pyre recently, mm-hmm. and I love Super Giant games. Yeah. Some, on some whim that, that they get knocked over the head, that they need to have microtransactions in their game, I would still buy their game. Even if it was a single player game, because I love all, f- well, correction, I love their first two games. I love Bastion and I love Transistor. I have yet to play Pyre, but from what I've heard and everybody talking about it, it's just as amazing as the first two. So there's no reason that I wouldn't love it. But if they came about and said, we're going to have microtransactions in a single player game, I might buy. I might have to buy the game because I love that developer so much. You know what I mean? Well, first I'd be like, "What the fuck are y'all doing?" You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I'd probably yeah. still end up buying it and being like, "I'll grind it out." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I will grind it to get what I need to like beat this game. Like I, if if Super Giant said they were doing microtransactions, um, I feel like I would ask several questions before I right. before I immediately said no. Um, right. And I feel like I feel like if they did micro microtransactions, like Greg and Amir would be super forthright and saying, "Hey, this is why we're doing this." Yeah, yeah. At which point, either I'm on board with that reason or I'm not. Like I, I agree with you. It's definitely like so. Like Shadows of Mortar, microtransactions in a single player game automatically written off my list because yeah, I have because, not because a lot I know of what they're doing. In it. And I, I know what they're doing, lot, but I don't have a lot of interest in that game. So, like a game where I have a lot of investment in the developer or the you know the the um, publishing company, like if it was a, a, a Devolver Digital game, like I love a lot of Devolver Digital games. So it's like, well, okay, like you said, I'd ask some questions. I'd be like, okay, why is this being done? Does this penalize a person that does not? spend money on the microtransactions if it doesn't then i'm in if it does well then it's going to be like how you know you know what i mean like yeah it it depends on how much i love that game and and you know so it's a case-by-case basis but nine times out of ten i will definitely not be buying a single player game well and see and see like with with devolver digital you just kind of have to be careful like is it a game they're publishing or a game they're developing because they do that's true they do develop um, some of their games. Yeah, like, um, like a lot. Ruiner, Ruiner, I think is their next game on deck, which looks freaking. That awesome. game looks cool, man. That game looks like, so badass. Like so. Uh, and then they, what they just put out a, is Absolver out now. Yeah, it came out this past week. Okay. So like, 
not not like tomorrow, but like last week. No, is it? So. It's not them developing Ruiner, is it? I no, I don't think. I don't think. It, I think they're just publishing it. No. That game Corey, looks like kick ass. But anyway. Corey, would you open? Uh, I opened the blood orange squeechy. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. What do you think? It's tasty. I like blood orange stuff. There's a there's a local brewery that does a blood orange wheat that is pretty fucking fantastic. So I'm enjoying that. Myself. That is brewed with blood oranges and then milk sugar, so it kind of gives you a. They, is it brewed with blood oranges or blood and oranges? No, blood, blood oranges, oranges <laughs> not blood and. That would be crazy. Yeah. If it was brewed with blood and oranges. Well, there's a lot of. I mean, we're only. It's only a matter of time because there is that beer circulating the internet that is brewed with urine. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but it's not. It's like recycled. Like it's not straight up. People are taking a piss into a container and throwing it in the. I'm, I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just trying to like. It's recycled. It's, so that means somebody drank it and then peed it back out. Is that how you? It's, yeah, it's a I'm West. Like, it's a West. It's a West World type thing. Or what? What is that? What is that movie? Uh, with uh, Kevin Costner, where he drinks the piss. Waterworld. It's a water world type thing. So what? Oh, oh, that's that's your that's your reasoning. I'm not gonna drink one it, of Pat. Hollywood's biggest flops. Is your reasoning here? I'm not gonna <laughs> drink it. I'm just saying, like he peed into a container and it was all recycled out, and he was able to drink it again. Well, see, I'm wondering, like, I'm well. If you think about no, the- listen, it's not gonna be our lifetime. It's gonna be like the next generation or the generation after that, where they will have to drink their own piss. Because we are pissing away our fucking resources. Yeah. And I don't want to have kids because I don't want to leave them in the shit world that we, you know, we have going on right now. So, so it's, it's just okay. like. I read, an article, I read an article earlier today that uh, <laughs> North Korea prepped their news lady to, to announce the end of the world. So, Oh, great. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. No, yeah, so. um. Like I was sitting, I, I was actually thinking about that. Uh, not, not like today, but like the last time I was on the brew review, and we were talking about weird beer. And I didn't bring this up; I should have. But I'm sitting there thinking, like anybody who knows anything about the brewing process, there's like a boil. Yeah. And yeah. urine is predominantly water based, so you're boiling yeah. a lot of. I mean, granted, a lot of it away. I know this from being in healthcare that urine is. Sterile, and if you get, I was just saying, last time I checked, urine is sterile. So, yeah, you're a doctor. You know. okay. what? That's a doctor, he knows. Doctor, doctor Infinite, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Shaniqua Blood Souls. At your yeah. service, is that your, your DJ name, Doctor Rewind? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Hell yeah, same. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. That's you're actually welcome. like one of the coolest things you've ever said. I know you said that <laughs> twice to me in one week. Yep. Oh, uh, what what did you say to me for the other day? I forget. I don't remember what you said. It was something yeah. you, Apparently something you it was said. The like, coolest thing he's ever said. To you. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I feel special. Matt Matt thinks I'm cool twice a oh, week. I always did. Um, but like, I so loved. There's a there's a boil, so I'm wondering like how much of that just sort of destroys whatever you put in because current's predominantly water based. Yep. Mm-hmm. And sterile. And sterile. So if you boil it, really, how much harm are you doing? Really? Uh, here, here's the thing. The people that are actually drinking that now are the forward-thinking people and future-proofing people who are like, this is what we might have to do after the apocalypse. Oh, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? And so they're oh, just yeah. like, I'm jumping in, getting both feet wet. Let's yep. see what happens. Mm-hmm. And oh, hey, this is not that bad. I mean, hopefully I've heard it's, that it's not that bad. I haven't tasted it's not myself. That bad. Yeah, but, yeah. But you know, like people are starting to buy bugs at grocery stores because we are running out of livestock, and they don't want to deal with GMO bullshit. Yeah. So yeah. it's only a matter of time before everything has to change. That's right. And you know, the way I see it is, you know, we could talk about life being unsustainable for humans, but I agree with George Carlin. The planet's going to be fine. Oh, we're yeah. Still, it'll, it'll bounce back after we're, we're gone. We are literally a passing phase in its life. And I it's, play, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> huh? I yeah. played Horizon. I know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Back to games. Um, so we've been going for hour and a half ish. Hour and twenty. Hour twenty. Maybe hour. Hour. And, no, it's been an hour and a half. Yeah, you're right. We shall we? Shall, shall we get to twenty questions? Are we doing no. twenty questions? Are y'all ready to leave? No, I need this point really bad. But I wish we were going up against Matt because he's winning. So, but yeah. I need I need this point really bad. All right, so okay, I'm gonna pull up my clock. So I get my timers ready. You want me to keep question count? Yeah, you can keep question count. So we have what is it? It's um, it's two minutes and then five minutes, right? Yes. And then was it? It was was it fifteen minutes at the end? Five. Or was minutes it just five minutes, minutes at the end? Five so minutes. it's just straight up two and five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Two right, every five. five, and then five at the end. Thirty seconds a question. Yeah, thirty seconds yeah. a question. Wow. Thirty seconds a question. All right, yeah. um, let me delete these so I don't have to worry about them. All right, I got them all. All right. So, are you gentlemen ready? Who's up first? Corey. Okay. Corey's up first. Are you ready? Yeah. Starting now. Did this game initially release during the HD era? When okay, I'm pausing it. When was the HD era? Just clarify that it for me. Started with Xbox Wii? 360, Wii, and yeah, Xbox uh, 360, Wii, PS3, PS3. DS. So you asked if it initially released in the HD era, correct? Yes. Yes. No. Okay. So hold on a second. Reset. Matt, are you ready? Yep. Go. Was this game released before January 1st? Or wait, was it re- released initially before January 1st, 2000? No. Okay. So, sounds like a, sounds like a PS2, Xbox, GameCube-ish. Uh, mm-hmm. You ready, Corey? Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Wait a I'm, second. I'm ready. Uh was this game initially a console exclusive, like exclusive to a console? Yes. Okay. Matt? Was this game exclusive to a Microsoft console? No. Okay. Corey? Uh, can you shoot things? Was your like your your? Uh, mm, yeah, can you shoot things? I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it. With the vagueness of that, I have to say yes. Matt, okay, so that, that's question five. Yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Let me reset and go up to the two minutes. You ready? Set. Mm-hmm. Okay. So between 2000 and 2005? Yeah. And then uh you you can yeah. shoot stuff. You can shoot stuff, but I guess I should have been But it's vague. That. Yeah. So but appear. we know we know that ranged combat is a thing. Yeah. Um did not appear on Xbox, so it's probably it might be a Japanese title. Like a Japanese like Developed title, I want to say. You're to a minute and 30, gentlemen. Okay. You have a minute uh, and 30, I should say. Sorry. Hmm. We could narrow it down by was it a first party developed game? Yeah. Was it a Japanese developed game? I'll do first party. Okay. Uh, uh, was a Japanese developed game? What? Uh, we could do perspective, although there weren't very many first person games outside of the xbox that gen yeah uh, let's 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 start with let's, i like the first party and then japanese you have less than 60 seconds and then <laughs> you know where my initial thought went was like resident evil 4 because <laughs> <laughs> it was initially a console exclusive but it came to ps2 later you can shoot things, but it's not really recommended that you shoot things in Resident Evil games. 30 seconds. Hmm. So you open. Who developed Resident Evil? Capcom? Capcom. 
far as I know, yes, Capcom. Okay. Uh, I'm ready for question six, Moose. Y'all are done? Yep. All right, so I'm ending, ending that. You don't need to set the timer. We're going to have it right now. Is this a first-party developed game? No. Okay. Is this a Japanese-developed game? Yes. Matt, oh. 30 seconds. Oh. Should I just ask if it's a Capcom game, Corey? You might as well just get out of the way. Is this a Capcom game, Moose? No. Okay. Uh, Damn it. Corey, you have 30 seconds. Uh, um, okay. Uh, so you you said yes to Japanese developed game, right? Um, mm -hmm. Is uh, shoot? Is this a is this an RPG? I'm gonna need you to rephrase that. Like, now, by rephrase, do you mean just sort of narrow down the RP the type of RPG? Yes. Or? Yes. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I'll give you another 30 seconds for that because your question was oh, shoot. a little I, vague. Because that's when like kind of action RPGs started coming around. Yeah. Really was that era. There weren't really any tactical RPGs really uh, in that era. I don't really remember when Final Fantasy Tactics came out. Uh, was Is this an action RPG? Yes. Ooh. Matt, you have 30 seconds. Japanese action RPG thinking I mean Kingdom Hearts is an action RPG mm -hmm. Final Fantasy really wasn't Kingdom wait, you, seconds. Say, you say um jeez uh, I gotta keep you all in line no that's so, fair um action RPG so are there Disney characters in this game no. Okay, so it's not Kingdom Hearts. Corey, you have 30 seconds. Oh, oh, wait, no, no, no. My apologies. You guys get your two minutes. That's question 10. Or are no, we I just, no, that was nine. I just hit 10. Okay. With Corey's My answer. apologies. All right, so you have 30 seconds, Corey. Um, okay. Uh, uh, was this a was this on did this game initially appear on PlayStation console? Right, I'm pausing the timer. I need you to rephrase that. Are you talking about the platform or what are, what are you talking about? Well, you said it was con uh, I, exclusive to a console. Yes, so yes. He was asking if it was yes. I just, it, 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 it originally announced on a PlayStation console. Okay. So Matt, you are up. This no, is our this, oh, wait, no, this, this is, is our two, two minutes. minutes. All right, two minutes is starting now. Okay, so we got a PlayStation action RPG, Japanese developed. Uh, what action RPGs were on PlayStation one or two? Late PS one, PS two. I mean, Tales games. Yeah. Were those action Star... RPGs, though? Yeah, they were definitely. Like, Star Ocean? Is that an action RPG? No, I thought that was a, a, just a... Um, I thought that was a JR, traditional JRPG, but yeah. it was um, like I know live the one, action. I know the one for PS2 was JR, like uh, traditional JRPG. Xeno Saga was traditional. Yeah. Uh, so how do we want to narrow this down more? Well, Tails is done by Namco. You're down to a minute. Persona is done by at what? Well, Persona is Jared. Do we Jared want to Smith. try to narrow it down to company? I just don't want to get stuck in that that hole. Yeah, you do. That dang needs this point. So what are the big RPG? Main like at you said Atlas and Atlas. Square. Square, Namco, Spy, Enix at the time. Yeah, Enix. At Enix. The time. Ooh, what Just if it was it. like what if it was like Valkyrie Profile or something? NIS. Less than thirty seconds. Twenty-five. We get asked if this game was popular because, like, 
because there was a lot of niche stuff at the time. Yeah. Hmm. What was it? Panzer Dragoon, maybe? Mm, that's more of an on rails thing, though. Panzer mm. Dragon Saga. Same and those day? those games those games were on. Time is up. They got an Xbox though. So. Oh okay. Time is up. Mm. All um, right. So who's it, up next? I, think I am. All right. So you got thirty seconds, Chief. So I think I'm. Just, I think I'll stick with company if you want to. If you want to nail down other things. Okay. All right. That way, at least we're. Since we're halfway through, at least we're working You're doing on some two parallel parts. there. You're doing yeah. some parallel yeah. work. Is we're this doing. a Namco game? Or no. You, okay. Uh, or you're up. Thirty seconds. Was your was the main protagonist of this game male? Like a like a like a boy? No. Matt, that could have been either a really dumb question. Or a really good question. Could be a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. Action RPG with a female protagonist. I'm, what if it's uh, ooh, Valkyrie Profile Two had a female protagonist? Ten seconds. I don't know anything about that game. You're gonna have to help me out. Um, I, don't, I don't know anything about it either. I just know it was an action RPG that started female. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Um. Does the, game, does the game begin with V? The game's title. No. Damn it. Yeah, worth a shot. Corey, you have 30... Wait, you have 30 seconds now. Sorry. Uh, okay, so... Oh, boy. How do I narrow this down? RPG. PlayStation. Uh, um... Were there ten seconds? Is this oh okay? So is the story sci-fi based? No. Okay, so that eliminates Xenosaga. Matt, yeah. you Matt, you have thirty seconds going now. Jeez. Um Action RPG with female protagonist. Hmm. Action RPGs. Hmm. Japanese developer. Fuck. Um. Hmm. What about uh, shoot? What about something like? What else came out on PS2? What about like Muramasa? And a, what was the a, other one? I need a question. That was in the HD era. Um. What was the one that came out before that though? Is this a Vanillaware game? Yes. Odin Sphere. I know. That's what I, I was thinking. The one I couldn't remember what the PS2 one was called. Corey, uh, you have twenty seconds. Is this is this action RPG a side-scrolling game? Yes. Matt, you have thirty seconds. Actually, that was question 15, but oh, <laughs> I have <I've> <laughs> You get two minutes. Now. I say we, I, I say right out of the gate, I'm going to ask if this is based on Norse mythology because Odin's Sphere is. Okay. Uh, and then the art style, hand drawn art style. Uh, man. Man. Ah! Oh, so proud of myself. I was thinking Muramasa, but I was like, I know that didn't come to PlayStation, but that same developer made a PS2 game. I couldn't remember what it was called. Well, Muramasa did come to PlayStation. It, it, it went to um, Vita. Vita. It's, it's easily one of the best Vita games on it. Do we, um, do we want to end the huddle and just go? Because I think we could. I think we can narrow it down. Yeah. Okay. So, is this game based on Norse mythology? Yes. Uh, does this have a hand-drawn art style? Yes. Matt? Shall we, Corey? Yeah, go ahead. Guess. Is this, is this game Odin Sphere? 
Yes. Yes. Nice job, gentlemen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I am now two ahead of Moose. <laughs> and I have two points total. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I was really, I was like, I was like, man, I was like, hopefully I can get y'all with this one. But as soon as you said vanilla, where I was like, fuck. <laughs> so I'm, sitting here, I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. Female protagonist. The only game in town at that time was Vanillaware, and I'm pretty sure the only thing they had at that time was Odin Sphere. Well, was, I, I probably could have answered that. I could have probably could have been like, "You need to rephrase that question because there's multiple characters in Odin Sphere. Yeah. Like you play as her, and then you play as like like different people in the story. So there's not a set protagonist. So I think if I would have answered that differently, then you guys wouldn't have gone down that path. But, yeah. So. But anyways, it happened. Way to bring up a good goddamn game, Moose. Nice job. Well, well, I brought it up because I, I have it on Vita. The the remake mm -hmm. on Vita. What is what? Uh, Life Plaza. Luftrauser? Luftrauser. <laughs> Actually, so, no. It's, it's like Leifdreiser, but whatever. Yeah, Leif, Leif, <laughs> Leifdreiser. But Leifdreiser, uh, I got that on Vita, and it's pretty awesome. And it's usually on sale. Like, it'll mm -hmm. probably be on sale for the holidays, but... Um, it's a, really, the, it's a really good game. And I have the really storybook edition sealed right over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember I remember us talking about that. Yeah. yeah so 17 questions. That's not bad, guys. Okay, yeah, not bad. That's like two in a row we solved with the new format. Yeah, I know. I'm liking it. I'm I, liking it. So. I think it should stay. And we still have got three minutes till 10 o'clock. What do you say we wrap this up, gentlemen? Yeah. I say we wrap it up. Moose, yeah. where do we find you? You can find me on PlayStation at Sven, S-V-H-E-N-N. -E -N. I'm also on Twitter under that handle. I'm also under Instagram under that handle. And on Twitch, which I haven't started streaming stuff yet, but I'm going to. Uh, Jason and I are going to try and get stuff going for Nerds Gone Platinum. You can also find me on our Nerds Gone Platinum podcast, which definitely goes over the PlayStation Nation. So you can uh, tweet us at ng underscore platinum or you can email us at nerds gone platinum at gmail.com if you have any questions comments or concerns and listen to us under the nerds gone rogue radio ngr radio umbrella yeah mm. yeah. yeah i am matthew keel you can find me on any social media platform i choose to be on at infinite underscore rewind um, yeah. If you're talking to someone named Infinite Underscore Rewind, score rewind and it's not this dumb face, um, they're going to let you down. They're going to lie to you, and they're probably going to show you their penis at some point. Um, you show them their penis, anyways. But yeah, I, I mean, I yeah, and maybe that'll impress you. I don't know. Um, strange times we live in. But you can find me on Instagram posting about vinyl and or beer. Um, I usually just link. Instagram to my Twitter, so that's usually all I tweet. Um, you can find me also hosting or co-hosting the Brew Review with John Martin, Corm, and Jesse White. We have a good time. Our most recent episode, I believe, is about to go up, and it was a really good chat with Kevin Clem about real weird beer and beer snobbery. So I think it, I, I I had to show up late just because of life happening. Um, but that it was a good time. Also, uh, you can find me uh, co-hosting Matt and the B Flats uh, with Brian Spagnoli and Brian Raleigh. We talk about music, and uh, that's a good time as well. So that's where you find me, Corey. Take us home. All right, you can find me at Corey and HD on Instagram and Twitch and Twitter at some point. Uh, you can find me on NGR Radio. Nintendo Power Block, Arsenal X sometimes, uh, World One One sometimes, uh, Nerds Gone Platinum sometimes. Uh, you can find me everywhere. You can find all of our shows on ngrradio.com and on our YouTube page. Uh, please subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Uh, we have Facebook groups for the individual shows now. Uh, so if you want, you know, to find someone to help you hunt for trophies, join the Nerds Gone Platinum group. If you want to talk about some Xbox and Hunt for Chivos, you can go there. Uh, Nintendo Power Block, we talk about Switch stuff and some 3DS stuff, so uh, you can find us there as well. 
Or if you just want to hang out and have a good time, go to the NGR Radio Facebook page. Well, that I want to do. Uh, <laughs> so, you know what, Moose? Those, those groups aren't for you, okay? You just, you just go hide in your giant trophy case. Trophy case I'll try to hide in my uh, trophy. <laughs> Uh, my trophy but, case is bigger than his. It is. Ladies. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, you can find NGR Radio every Monday at 10 a.m. Corey got a platinum. Now he's all proud. <laughs> yeah, he got proud. bit by the bug, man. That was, yeah, a lot of work. that was a lot of work to get that platinum trophy. Yeah. I had to find all them, them Banook stats. Uh, Stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The it's the Evolve Platinum, and we'll talk. Yeah, um, nobody's it. playing Evolve anymore, so no thanks. Exactly, because I did it when it happened. Congratulations, um, so you're one of four people who played that game. <laughs> Me, Ray, and like the two guys I found that wanted to get the Platinum as well. Even when they made it free, nobody played. Oh, man, I'm glad. Yeah, I, was, I was gone by that time. I said, <laughs> that Platinum trophy popped, and I was done. I'm like, fuck that game. Yeah, <sighs> it, wasn't even, it wasn't even a bad game. It was. It just needed like a couple of tweaks. It could have been fine. <sighs> could have been so much better. I'm sure their microtransactions didn't help. But anyway. no, they, they, them, their microtransactions were just were all cosmetic. It was a complete misnomer. People were bitching about DLC, and those same people didn't bitch about Overwatch or or any other place where you could just buy skins. But that's another conversation for another goddamn time. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the exact conversation we had? today yes yeah okay. and that other time was about two hours ago when we started this. <laughs> yeah. so with that oh, banana man. and out okay now i'm gonna finish download our family of shows god damn it i'm really proud <laughs> no i'm proud of the, the especially with like outside of this show ngp and yeah. power block specifically have yeah are, have grown exponentially since we kind of expanded uh, mm-hmm. into the Arsenal Arsenal X nets. Not so, not so much. We're gonna, we're gonna. My my goal with NGP is to beat the Pow Block and then beat NG NGR Radio. And then, then the minute he does, he's gonna be like, you know what? I'm leaving. And we'll no, be no, I won't leave. I guess I'm still here. gonna I'm still gonna talk I'm still gonna talk PlayStation stuff. <laughs> me, me, and, me and Jason just sitting there talking PlayStation stuff. So yeah, uh, like that's like, my goal. He's like he's like I'm gonna leave and I'm taking NGP with me and you can't do anything about it. And nah, like, I wouldn't. All right, that. that's cool, man. It's all right. Matt and I'll start a rival PlayStation show. Oh and geez, we're gonna no, take we're it no. down. I'm not doing that. No, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna swim Matt. in our giant platinum trophy pool. Matt, Matt, and the one plat. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what you can call the show, Matt and the One Plat. Yep, <laughs> that's a good idea, Derek. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> Write that uh, down. <laughs> anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next week, we love you. Banana and out. Peace out, everybody.